Welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're talking about Alita Battle Angel and the potential sequels uh, that could happen, the stuff which has been planned, direct from one of the main producers, John Landau. Now, he's a longtime collaborat collaborator with James Cameron, and he was one of the driving forces behind Alita Battle Angel. Now, he spoke with Cinema Blend about the prospect of sequels, some brief topics of, of kind of what they had outlined and sort of planned here and there. Um, and so I want to touch on that and how there's the potential that this could happen. But then also the fact that this is now owned by Disney. Why I think uh, without some sort of changes anyway that it might not happen. Um, so we'll, we'll get to it. I, th I think you guys will find this interesting. Now... Alita Battle Angel obviously you know, sat down with Cinema Blend. And the article is quite interesting itself. It says, fans of Alita Battle Angel who really want a sequel have been calling themselves the Alita Army. And I've had some dealings with them. They're actually semi-reasonable uh, people. I've had some dealings with them over on Twitter because there were some, some very, very strange comments made about um, them and kind of the way they conduct themselves and things like this. And I was like, well, that's complete nonsense. Um, and, and they are actually, you know, just passionate fans so they have pushed that a petition for Elite Battle Angel 2 beyond 121,000 signatures in fact um, I have it here it is 127 uh, almost 128,000 currently so th there's a good amount that have been signed on to that now uh, so past 121,000 signatures and counting they have been tweeting they have been commenting, and we have been writing stories arguing why Alita deserves a sequel. Now, fans want Alita 2 to happen so much, so will it happen? Um, I'd quite like a sequel to Alita Battle Angel. I thought the film was pretty good, and it ended on a cliffhanger where you would obviously want it to continue. Um, it was very much an origin story. It was self-contained to a certain degree, but it was definitely an origin story, uh, and, you know, it deserves a sequel just based off of that because it, it set itself up for one, um, narratively speaking. Obviously, you know, it didn't make a, a, an awful lot of money. Um, it just about broke even, but I don't think it took much home for Fox. Now, John Landau, who produced the Lisa Battle Angel with James Cameron, Landau just spoke to Cinema Blend, so this is what the article is about, uh, about potentials for a sequel, and his advice to fans was basically keep it up. So it is quite literally make enough noise so Disney recognises there is a market for this. Um, so it is interesting. So he went on to say, what I think the Alita Army should do is keep peppering our family uh, now at Disney and let them know how important it is to have another Alita movie and hopefully we'll venture there one day. Now I really, really like the fact that he noted that it is the Alita Army. Uh, all, all too often, like producers and things like that, don't don't actually notice uh, the fan base and the names that they give them. They're very clearly aware of it, but they don't really talk about it or address it. Um, so I like that. I think that's really really cool. Now he says yes, as Alita Battle Angel producer John Landau noted, the family is uh, the family to reach is now at Disney. The movie was released in February 29, uh, 2019 by Twentieth Century Fox, and shortly after that, everything was finalised with Disney's acquisition of Fox properties. Uh, there's been a lot to sort out in the transition, so that's why Alita star Rosa Salazar said she understood why Disney didn't immediately have word on Alita 2. That said, it's now been a minute, and in that minute, the Alita army has kept the buzz going for Alita Battle Angel. The movie made 404.8 million worldwide. So this, these, these are uh, important bits to note. Now, the majority of that money was actually from overseas, which was 319 million at the international box office. So it only took you know, not even $100 million um, domestically, which isn't that good for 20th Century Fox for the US-based part. Um, I'm not overly sure what it made in the UK because 20th Century Fox does have um, a presence uh, in the UK, quite a big presence, actually. But it's that which is a little bit of a clincher because it was made for $170 million and it took $404 million worldwide. It did have a big marketing budget, probably very close to its production budget because it was everywhere 
Um, this movie was everywhere when it was being released. There were adverts everywhere. There were billboards. There were bus posters. It was just simply everywhere because there was a lot of push for this. So I don't think it would have. I think it would have broken even. But there's there's no uh, there's, there's there's no possibility of any profits here because of course the majority of the money being made overseas means that the studios in the states actually see a less total from it. Now. So it says, theoretically, how long would it take for an Elite sequel to make? Uh, here's more from Landau to Cinema Blend. So this is interesting. He says, I think that when you talk about any movie, and I won't talk specifically about Elite, but your first step is writing a script. You've got to assume that's going to take you 12 to 18 months to write a script. Assuming that script is great, you then have a 6 to 10 month pre-production. You then have a 6 month shoot. You then have a year of post-production. And that's just any movie of this ilk. Now, interestingly... Obviously, they do know what the next movies are. So it's not something... Th this whole comment here, that's fine. But they already have outlines for the next ones. Which, which is kind of renowned uh, with this whole story anyway. Because James Cameron had plotted out all of this stuff. And um, Robert Rodriguez sort of condensed it a little bit. Um, but I'm very much certain that James Cameron had probably plotted out the next few movies as well. So that's addressed here, and he says, absolutely, when Jim, uh, when James Cameron was going to direct us, which he was at a point in his mind, he had plotted out two additional stories of where we would go very specifically. So I guess the clue's kind of there, really. I think they were going to do it. Now he says, uh, in terms of streaming and Disney Plus and things like that, he says, well, I won't speak specifically about Alita. I would just tell you that I think James Cameron and I love the opportunities that streaming and these other avenues of distribution are offering people today. And, you know, we would love to get into those playgrounds and play in them, no matter what the title is. I don't think Alita would uh, lend itself to streaming. I think it, it's too high budget. It's too high budget for streaming. Now, you may look at, you know, you may hear that comment and say, yes, but The Mandalorian is high budget. And it is because it's like $120 million for a season, which is crazy. But that's also their tentpole property. That is all. That is literally the property they're using to sell Disney Plus to people uh, currently, which it is. So if you, if you think they're investing like $120 million into um, the, the Mandalorian as Disney Plus kind of tentpole, he go come and watch uh, and buy Disney Plus. They would have already made that money back. I would have imagined so with the subscription services. Something like Alita, with a very niche fan base, although it was a good film in my eyes, I don't think would work uh, on Disney Plus. And I don't think Disney would invest uh, in Disney Plus with it. And, you know, the same can be said for other streaming platforms like Amazon, for instance. They're spending a lot of money on the boys, but that's a temple property for them now. That's a property which they are literally going, yep, this is what's going to get us the subscriptions. Uh, it was the man in the high castle as well, but obviously changing with the times, they now need to appeal to a, a broader audience. And the R-rated comic book genre is definitely a good one to go down. So you got to, you know, think of these things as, as part and parcel of it all. And I don't think Alita would work on streaming too much money. Way, way, way too much money. Uh, and simply, it's not going to be a tentpole property to get people in. That's not how Disney will view it. Now, the other thing which I did kind of allude to at the start is that I don't think Alita aligns with the Disney brand. Not so much. And what I mean by that is you have to take a look at the type of character that Alita is. Now, Alita, in my opinion, you may disagree, but in my opinion, she is absolutely a strong female. She goes through a fantastic character arc uh, throughout the film. Uh, you know, a good I, I liked it anyway. So, a good character arc throughout the film, and in so develops her character and develops her own strength. That's not how Disney portray their female characters, especially not their strong female characters. So, I, you know, all, all being said and done, I don't think Alita is something which will be released under the Disney brand. I think it will stay under the Fox brand and banner because we know that that's still something which they're planning to do. And if it does happen, or if it does happen under Disney, they may try to change how Alita is because Disney's uh, female characters are renowned for simply being. They simply exist. We are told how amazing they are. We are told uh, 
uh, how good they are. And we rarely see it, and we rarely get to see the journey, so the origin to the point of which they're telling us they are uh, so good, which I guess falls under the kind of commentary of a Mary Sue. Uh, and that's not how, that's not how uh, you know, how Disney handle themselves. We, Alita doesn't align with that. Alita is a character which has progressed nicely. We go through a good character arc with her, a journey. Um, and you feel for her as a result of that. And that's why a lot of the fans really liked the character. So if this happens, expect some changes, I think, uh, unless it stays directly under Fox. But I thought you'd find this interesting. Um, I will leave a link to this petition down below in the uh, description box like you can see you know it says 127 thousand odd there so it's sort of broken even ish um but it's not really made you know a lot of money the movie i would be interesting interested to see the blu-ray sales for this because i think a lot of people went out in force to uh, to grab the blu-ray for us to try and support it and i would like a sequel to happen i really really would because rosa salazar was fantastic so there you go there is the uh, the kind of commentary and, and update on Alita Two. What did you guys think of? What do you guys think of the the prospects of this? The uh, the sort of comments on Disney having a very different archetype for their strong female characters. And what did you think of Alita? Let me know down below in the comment section. If you are new here, make sure you do hit subscribe. You can stay up to date on the world of pop culture and movie news by hitting the bell notification icon. Anyway, and as always, if you like this video, please, please, please do give it a like and a share. And if you want to support the channel further. I've got Patreon link down below, and I also have merch underneath every single video. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Mr. H. Take care.